today i'm going to talk about the rehabilitation of oral cancer patients uh, coming to the introduction uh, the progress has been made for the past several years with the survival patients with the head and neck cancers the current challenge is uh, between the balance the in intensity of the treatment and to preserve the functions of the head and neck post operatively and uh, the main aim to maximize the survival and to minimize the treatment related morbidity uh, disability for the patient uh, coming to the uh, uh, um, rehabilitation it is actually a multi disciplinary approach where all uh, the specialist uh, which i have mentioned here who has to take a specific part in uh, making the patient fit during the pre treatment assessment and the post treatment intervention they are such as surgical medical and radiation oncologist speech pathologist uh physiotherapist occupational therapist maxillofacial prosthodontist dental and nurse oncologist nutritionist uh, psychologist and social worker in which the speech pathologist plays a major vital role because they help the patients uh, uh help the patients uh, communicate uh, with the uh, for the speech and the swallowing function coming to the pre treatment counseling uh, like i said every uh, specialist has a specific role for the patients for the rehabilitation of head and neck oral cavity cancers the physician actually will provide the information to the patient with respect to the diagnosis prognosis and the treatment option and he has to establish a plan for the patient and he has to communicate with the respective team members so that they will uh, counsel the patient uh, uh, they will counsel the patient uh, uh, such uh, such a, uh, in, in a way that what they are but what they are going to have in the post operative period and how they are going to be treated the speech pathologist will help restore the communication and the swallowing function of the patient post operatively and uh, the patient should also be counseled on smoking and alcohol cessation because the uh, an addicted patient who is in uh, but effective uh, but um, ineffectively rehabilitated in the post operative period the nursing uh, the nursing officer should educate the patient regarding the feeding tube and the tracheostomy management coming to the rehabilitation of the chemotherapy uh, chemo radiation patients the most common uh, approach uh, treatment that we give is radiation alone or with concurrent chemotherapy or adjuvant after surgery the more common things that are affected by the radiations are swallowing and the voice both are affected in the radiation but the effect is variable depends upon the radiation field the dose of radiation and the concurrent chemotherapy chemotherapeutic agents and uh, to reduce the radiation effect uh, mobility of the radio aerodigestive tract should be maintained during the treatment whole treatment because it is important uh, to keep the patient swallowing if even if he is able to take only the sips of oral fluids and if the patient is in, uh, unable to swallow during this uh, treatment then uh, we should give naso uh, nasogastric feeding tube is inserted uh, as a bypass only the tube has been removed uh, when the patient is able to swallow after the treatment the patient is unable to adequately maintain the nutrition orally then particularly for the patients with re re receiving radiation the supplemental or primary nutrition is uh, uh, obtained via the temporary gastrostomy tube tender et al has uh, published a journal um, paper on uh, march 3 2011 a small randomized study that is actually it supports that the prophylactic use of feeding gastrostomies together with the oral feeding and swallowing exercise during the therapy with radiation therapy which improves the long term swallowing and the quality of life the, uh, after the treatment of radiation so, uh, the uh, what are the uh, possible consequences of the resting the digestive tract during the uh, chemo radiation without giving any oral sips of even without giving the oral sips of it will cause pharyngeal stenosis because the oxidation effect on the mucosa and the oral oral phary uh, pharynx will uh, will cause the uh, Uh, tissue mucosa will get mucositis and the patient will have the more, more post operative complications like mucositis and uh, mucosal uh, ne necrosis and uh, atrophy and necrosis and the underlying muscle as go for fibrosis then causing like causing pharyngeal stenosis or non functioning upper aero digestive tract when the pharyngeal stenosis occurs if the pharyngeal stenosis occurs the management is dilatation in the operating room the newer radiological uh, radiotherapy techniques uh, such as um, IMRD that spares the swallowing related structures as it has resulted in substantial improvement of long term dysphagia uh, this is facilitated by good supportive care which includes appropriate uh, this um, this pharyngeal stenosis is uh, prevented by 
the appropriate treatment of mucositis adequate analgesia management depression and nutrition monitored by the our treatment team supportive treatment the treatment of mucositis mouthwash contains uh, uh, this mouthwash can be given which contains nystatin uh, diphenhydramine and an antacid which uh, which prevents the which make the mucosa uh, uh, less edematous and the oral care the recent effort to identify the newer agents that may reduce the mucositis during radiotherapy include emifostin and palimifrin that's like these are the keratinized growth factor this mean none of these agents can yet be recommended for routine use based on the published data from the cylinder et al that is published in 2011 uh, then the antidepressants the patient in the head and neck patients so post operatively they will become uh, depressed so the first line depressant is serotonin reuptake inhibitors and the Sim patients with symptoms of fatigue, we can give modafinil. Then uh, patients with anxiety, uh, we can give clonazepam. Or to the patients who has a withdrawal from alcohol, we can give clonazepam. And the patients uh, transdermal testosterone is also being useful for symptoms of fatigue. Where uh, free testosterone level should be obtained to verify the testosterone levels, which are which is low. the medication to improve the salivary flow is pilocarpin and sevimilin pilocarpin is indicated in radiated patients but a minority of report has been subjectively efficacy has been reported from the uh, swan et al study which was published in 2006 the sevimilin is indicated in jogren's disease but it is of often used off label for the xerostomia with patients uh, using long term artificial saliva can be taken as a uh, gel or spray or lozenges that contains methylcellulose as a lubricating agent but uh, however the instead of using salivary substitute it is better most patients are used to take the frequent sips of, of uh, uh, fluids to maintain hydrate the mucosa oropharynx most important advances to reduce the incidence of xerostomia is intensive modulated radiotherapy because in other uh, 2d uh, 3d conformal rt the uh, there is a uh, the the previous generation of imrt which has uh, more uh, it, it causes uh, re, uh, atrophy of the saliva uh, per, uh, salivary glands which causes xerostomia now with the imrt which actually uh, it only uh, modulates and treat only the uh, tumor uh, place where we want to give the uh, it spares the other uh, vital structures like parotid uh, salivary glands incidence of aspiration is increases during and also after the treatment the reduction of aspiration is facilitated by aggressive swallowing exercise postures and maneuvers which i'll be talking later uh, in this session the exercises are introduced uh, focusing on focusing on improving strength range, range of motion and the coordination of motion uh, movements the areas that are commonly focused include improving the mandibular labial lingual and range of movements uh, range of motion the it improves the strength and coordination of lips tongue palate postpharyngeal and laryngeal elevation several patient factors the several patient factors that also affect the outcomes are like continuous smoking and alcohol consumption gastroesophageal reflux disease and the tissue uh, oxidative effects of the radiation from and coming to the post treatment swallowing assessment the extent and severity of the communication swallowing disorder which will be influenced by the site of the lesion the extent of the lesion the type of reconstruction and the use of adjuvant treatment modalities know about the swallowing uh, how to do the swallowing we, we should uh, little we should know the normal physiology of swallowing it is anatomically three phases of swallowing but physiologically it's four phases coming to the oral preparatory phase the it uh, um, mostly involves the mastication and bolus formation it causes the chewing reflex starts this mastication bolus formation in this the lips will be closed anteriorly posteriorly the tongue will be closed against the soft palate it's a closed cavity in the oral cavity it's the, it will become a closed cavity which keeps the bolus from prematurely spilling into the pharynx and uh, the next phase is oral propulsive phase where the tongue elevates and uh, uh, tongue elevates and propels the bolus into the pharynx then coming to the pharyngeal play, phase which is a complex phase which involves the multiple components well, su such as the soft palate which elevates to seal the nasopharynx so that the food will be preve uh, prevented from getting enter into the nasopharynx uh, larynx hyoid bone move anteriorly and upwards so the and the true and false vocal cords abducts closes the epiglottis moves posteriorly and downwards these components will prevent the aspiration and the swallowing reflex which actually inhibits the respiration in the uh, from the nuclear tract of solitarius the pharyngeal waves uh, constrictor muscles acts to propel the food down and the upper esophageal sphincter relaxes once the food enter into the pharynx the reflex causes the upper esophageal sphincter to relax and uh, the 
laryngeal elevation uh, anteriorly uh, moves anteriorly upwards which causes opening of the upper esophageal sphincter these are the two phases oral and pharyngeal phases that we should know because the most of the post operative complications will occur in these phases only and coming to the esophageal phase as a completion sac uh, the bolus after the pharynx the bolus enter into the esophagus by the esophageal anthrax sequentially which causes primary and secondary peristalsis which uh, takes the uh, uh, bolus into the uh, lower esophageal sphincter which relaxes then reaches the stomach this is a picture from the genang showing the uh, tongue uh, pushes the food into the oropharynx by, by the base of the tongue that pushes the food in the or oropharynx and the picture b showing that the soft palate that prevents the food getting into the nasopharynx picture c showing that the epiglottic closure so that prevents the food prevents getting into the trachea and the picture four showing the esophageal phase the normal trans uh, transit time for the oral phase and pharyngeal phase follow is 1.5 to uh, 1.5 seconds or less than that and uh, coming to the esophageal phase it takes around 8 to 20 seconds uh, how to assess the swallowing the, it can be assessed subjectively or objectively a subjective assessment the clinical examination involves the evaluation of oral motor skills along with the presentation of various con consistencies of food and liquids which will be done by the speech pathologist which i'll be talking in the, the session later and the observations are made regard to the oral competency or uh, the oral competency the ti timeliness of swallow the duration of swallow how, how long he is swallowing to uh, 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 keeps it in the mouth or in the pharynx and the laryngeal elevation and the clinical signs or symptoms of aspiration such as cough during deglutition and the objective measures are uh, two st uh, uh, study that can be done that is video fluoroscopic swallow study and fiber optic endoscopic evaluation of swallow coming to the video fluoroscopic swallowing study the in video fluoroscopic swallowing study, we use x-ray or a fluoroscopy with the help of cm with the barium as a contrast medium we can use it to age, uh, visualize the swallowing and the rehabilitative movements in the uh, oral cavity and the pharyngeal phase also we can see uh, even esophageal phase too and uh, in patients with suspected aspiration it is better to use oral gastrographin so that if it all it's aspirates uh, it's a contrast medium which observes and uh, it evaluates the including all the stages of swallowing during the presentation of food with the various consistency also and it is ideal for patients with oropharyngeal dysphagia dysphagia because it allows assessment of strategies and diagnosis of the aspiration severity how much is getting aspirated and which consistency the patient is getting aspirated this is a picture showing uh, video fluoroscopy of uh, patients having a uh, picture showing the video fluoroscopy of a patient having a pharyngeal pool this is a oral phase where the patient having the oh, contrast in the barium contrast in the mouth and the picture, pharyngeal phase showing the uh, foot uh, contrast passing through the oropharynx and this is the esophageal phase where the food is uh, got pulled in the uh, upper uh, just above the cricopharynx and another picture another th picture shows the nasal regurgitation where the contrast is getting into the oropharynx but uh, the or or from the oral oral phase it is a oral phase and it is getting into the oropharynx where there is a nasal regurgitation into into the the barium contrast is getting regurgitated into the nas uh, nasopharynx this is the soft palate in between the contrast this is the esophageal phase showing the full nasal regurgitation. Contrast is getting into the nasal cavity. Uh, this is another picture of video fluoroscopy patient showing the aspirate, uh, the patient showing the aspirate in the trachea. There is a minor degree of aspiration. And there is a picture showing the bolus retention of uh, same contrast in the valicula and the pyriform sinus. The second uh, study is fiber optic ev endoscopic evaluation of swallowing. So it's a, nothing, uh, it's a it's short form is PES. It's a fiber optic nasal, the, this is a picture showing the fiber optic nasal endoscope how to uh, that how the procedure should be done uh, first uh, first is a fiber optic nasal endoscope to observe the pharyngeal and laryngeal structures directly after the pharyngeal uh, pharyngeal phase of swallow the actually the disadvantage here is the image is temporarily lost during the swallow in this procedure the patient is uh, uh, should take the contrast material in the mouth and he has to swallow during that time the uh, the bolus <coughs> contrasting material this uh, used to note the premature spillage into the hypopharynx or laryngeal vestibule before the swallow initiation and the along the uh, with the presence of residua in the hypopharynx and after the swallow also and the this is a picture showing the showing the uh, vo vocal folds vocal cords and the, this picture shows the, uh, the the contrast material not entering into the airway just above the hypopharynx this is uh, at the level of the it penetrates at the level of above the vocal cord this is at the level of the vocal cord where the contrast is getting. This is inside, it's the trachea, the contrast. 
so the vocal cord movements can be assessed through the fes but it yields information that's a disadvantage it yields information relatively uh, there is a statistically significant correlation between the aspiration detector on the fluoroscopy after chemo radiation of head and neck cancers and the risk of subsequent aspiration of pneumonia has been observed from the study of a hunter uh, uh, fong et al and the successful rehabilitation is a reduction of the aspiration not necessarily the er elimination of it the optimization of the bolus type and consistency is the main um, uh, treatment for the patients with the aspiration the swallowing exercises are important for strengthening improving the mobility and the improving the coordination of the movements the post treatment swallowing rehabilitation in this the speech pathologist rehabilitates the swallowing disorder with the use of postural assist postural assist is nothing but the making the patient uh, changing the body position so that the patient can able to adapt a position which where they is able to uh, get the uh, feel the food into the mouth so that uh, he can able to swallow it maneuvers there are maneuvers the maneuvers are like uh, they it, it alters the normal swallow physiology and uh, make the patient uh, uh, swallow this is all done by the speech pathologist and uh, the speech pathologist with control of uh, make the patient control the bowel size and rate of intake he modifies the modification of the bowel consistency is also uh, bowel consistency also done and uh, exercises the most posture involves the alteration of head or body position to direct the bolus to the sensitive native tissue to direct the bolus uh, to more functional tissue or open the pharynx or close the larynx these are the uh, 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 sorry sir. these are the posture which uh, uh, causes the posture which involves the bolus control and transport into the you know, oral uh, swallowing during the swallowing phase maneuvers it alters the swallowing physiology these maneuvers are designed to increase the base of tongue contact with the posterior pharyngeal wall so that there won't be any nasal regurgitation it improves the epiglottic closure elevates the larynx and opens the hypopharynx to prevent the aspiration uh, postural assist and maneuvers may be prescribed to reduce the penetration uh, and the aspiration with the goal of achieving safe and efficient oral intake the postures uh, what are the postures that we can uh, the speech pathologist suggest for the these posture and maneuvers this it has a specific uh, the patient uh, they they uh, uh, prescribe to this specific patients what the patient is having de uh, defective uh, the head, head tilt in head tilt uh, the patient moves the head to the better side so that the bolus is directed through the oral cavity and uh, and oral bolus transport is improved and head rotation during the head rotation uh, the twist head uh, the uh, the patient should twist the head to the weaker side so that the weaker side is closed off and the bolus travels to the stronger side the rotating the head to the left or, or uh, right side increases the uh, right, uh, increases the pharyngeal contractive pressure at the level of the valvular and piriform sinus on the side of the rotation it decreases the uh, upper esophageal sphincter resting pressure on the opposite side and increases the uh, upper esophageal sphincter on the anterior posterior uh, diameter it increases so that the bolus transport is uh, Uh, head back posture the patients with uh, oral incompetency that is the patient with lip loss uh, post operatively they will be like we cannot keep the patient uh, even oral food will get leak so for them head back support can be given by bypassing the oral stage we utilizing the gravity to clear the oral cavity a chin tuck posture there are certain posture that i have been uh, um, i have uh, uh, posted in the ppt that there is something called chin tuck posture why we are, why, why to do this chin tuck posture because the patients with uh, premature spillage and widens uh, 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 such as nasal regurgitation it prevents the premature spillage and widens the valvula and increases the space in the oropharynx it moves the base of tongue close to the pharyngeal wall and reduces the risk of nasal regurgitation and it narrows the entrance of trachea and reduces the risk of aspiration also how to do it the small amount of uh, fluid has to be taken and while holding it tuck the chin close to the chest as possible and swallow the food or uh, drink keep the your chin tuck your uh, chest during the swallow and relax it that is supraglottic swallow maneuver in the supraglottic swallow maneuver it actually uh, um, it uh, why to do it actually it's a voluntary breath hold closes uh, the vocal cord before and during the swallow thus protects airway when we inspire uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, air then it, the vocal cord gets closed after that the it is before resumes the breath the patient will clear the throat and uh, whatever the flu food that is remaining inside the oropharynx will come out with the expectation on the uh, cough with the cough the patient will expectorate the residual material left above the pharynx after the swallow how to do it take a deep breath hold the breath tightly bearing down keeping the keep keep holding your breath tightly while you swallow 
after the every swallow the patient should cough immediately so that the residual material which is in the pharynx above the pharynx will uh, come to the oral cavity again patient has to do the same procedure to the mendelson maneuver mendelson maneuver it used to increase the elevation laryngeal elevation and thereby increases the extent and the duration of cricopharyngeal opening patient with decreased laryngeal elevation uh, laryngeal movements we can suggest this maneuver by the speech pathologist uh, opinion and consequent reduced uh, Pega frontal opening. It keeps the larynx elevated longer, prolonging the opening of the esophageal, upper esophageal sphincter, and it helps to normalize the timing of pharyngeal swallow and improves the coordination of the swallow. How to do it? Swallow normally feel the laryngeal elevation during the swallow, and on the next swallow, feel the larynx get elevated and hold it up with your neck muscles, not the whole larynx, but the neck muscles. Do do not try lift the la larynx early. Let it lift uh, normally. And then hold it up with so that it does not drop, so that the like, cricopharyngeal opening duration will be more, so that the swallow will be complete. The maneuvers are shaker maneuver. In shaker maneuver, you increase the uh, laryngeal expansion with the duration, with and duration of the upper esophageal opening, sphincter opening. The patient who exhibit uh, reduced upper esophageal sphincter opening and who demonstrate the foot residue in the piriform sinus, we can do the maneuver. In this maneuver, patient has to lie in a supine position with. Uh, uh, without any pillow the patient has to uh, see the see their own toes we have, they have to do it every 30 times for three, three uh, for every uh, for every th three three times like a 30 uh, 90 times they have to do it so that this uh, this laryngeal excretion uh, will be uh, coming to the masoka maneuver in masoka maneuver it improves the posterior pharyngeal constriction wall by making the contact with base of tongue this uh, the patient it improves the uh, posterior pharyngeal constriction wall by making the contact with base of tongue the tongue is placed in between during this maneuver so that the foot pass through the oropharynx coming to the post treatment um, speech assessment the speech generation assessment of uh, it is assess the speech generation assessed by the respiration phonation uh, resonance and articulation for optimum phonatory function the adequate pulmonary reserve for the uh, breath support is uh, needed intact sound generator such a voice uh, that is a vocal cord and uh, intact vocal tract phonation can occur in glottic or supraglottic larynx the pharynx or an uh, external source such as artificial larynx an important component of the speech production is the vocal resonance the much of the shaping of speech occurs in the oral cavity only the for the articulation the for the speech to occur the articulation to be optimized the patient should have a intact oral sphincter intact oral sphincter is nothing but uh, orbicularis oris muscle that oral uh, the muscle should be functioning well and the tip uh, tongue tip to premaxillary contact should be maintained uh, the maxillary alveolar contact with the lateral tongue uh, and the mobile tip should be there so that the articulation will be optimized Up, and the others are up to, uh, obliteration of dead space within the oral cavity where, where the foot will be usually collected uh, in post operative period uh, soft palate contact with the base of tongue in the speech deficit commonly not only occurs in the post surgical patient but also occurs in post chemo radiated patients the access the speech pathologist should have access to the surgeon's template of surgical defect including the uh, what are the muscles and nerves that has been uh, removed uh, uh, which is useful for the assessment of post operative patients she can plan where they can plan for the uh, rehabilitation there is a uh, hypernasality versus hyponasality these conditions can happen if the soft palate and lateral or posterior pharyngeal walls are not functioning properly the voice may uh, sound hyper or hypernasal. Hypernasality is rhinolalia aperta where there is associated with too much sound, that is air leakage. This is the picture showing the normal, uh, picture showing the normal uh, uh, resonance uh, phonation where the uh, more, much of the uh, uh, air travel towards the or in the oral cavity. Only small amount of uh, air is passed through the nasal cavity and the normal uh, uh, sp speech is maintained. In case of hypernasality, where the soft palate defect is there, or the, it is not uh, approximated, where the both oral, ca oral cavity and nasal cavity has the same resonance. In case of hyponasality, where the when there is a blockage uh, in the uh, between the soft palate and the posterior pharyngeal wall, then all all of the first resonance occurs in, in the uh, from the oral cavity only. That causes hyponasality, which is rhinolalia clausa. For that sound to be shaped into the intelligent speech, there must be coordination between the adequate contact of the articulators. Resonance and the well competency, the thorough evaluation including the articular assessment, oral motor assessment, and the measurement of nasal airflow should be uh, we have to assess. This is a picture showing the nasometry where uh, it refers to the uh, 
measurement of modulation of the area of the velopharyngeal opening using the movements of velum, which is nothing but soft pellet, and the pharyngeal walls the uh, video fluoroscopy and uh, nasal endoscope can also be useful for assessment of articulatory precision and velopharyngeal incompetency but are better it is suited for the evaluation of evaluation assessment coming to the rehabilitation of the neck the neck dissection is performed treatment of the neck metastasis the clinical sequelae are secondary to post operative weakness of the trapezius muscle which includes neck stiffness shoulder girdle weakness and chronic pain the extent of neck dissection uh, is uh, selected versus modified uh, the the factors that depends on the neck dissection that are uh, selected versus modified radiation those what is related age weight all the patient's ability to rehabilitate after uh, neck dissection patient who has uh, the study chepaka et, et al study shows the published on 2002 shows that the patient who has undergone selective neck dissection has significantly better shoulder function uh, than the patient who undergone uh, under, undergone uh, modified radical neck dissection with the same regional control rates to reduce the pain and discomfort to improve the and improve the mobility passive and active range of motions have been shown to significantly improve the long term qu uh, function and quality of life coming to the rehabilitation of the oral cavity the surgery and post op radiation remains the most common treatment approach in the oral cavity reconstructive surgeon there is a plastic reconstructive surgeon must uh, was thorough with the optimization of the oral function and the general approach of the oral cavity reconstruction is to perform an anatomical reconstruction. This is a picture from the Devita. Shows the plastic surgeon, uh, the reconstructive surgeon plants his uh, 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 flap from the forearm for the patients with uh, patient with uh, hemiglossectomy. What are the goals of oral cavity reconstruction? The goal should be obliteration of the oral cavity. That is, there should not be any uh, space in where the uh, separately there should not be any uh, dead space. Uh, it, it should be, it, there should not be any space where the foot can collect. That is, obliteration of the oral cavity should be there. Maintain premaxillary contact. The tongue, uh, tongue and premaxilla should be in contact so that there won't be any metaphor. And maintain the finger function of the tongue. Finger function of the tongue is nothing but the uh, sweeping function. The tongue should sweep all around the uh, lab. Uh, uh, lingual labial sulcus and everywhere so that the uh, visual food will not get collected so that it can be maintained that is the finger function of the tongue facilitate retention uh, and uh, movement of secretion uh, within the oral cavity that the reconstruction should facilitate the retention and the movement of secretion within the oral cavity and it should optimize the sensation of the remaining native tissue and reverse the free transfer tissue transfer uh, in general these goals are best met with the local tissue and re revascularized autogenous tissue uh, reconstruction this is the picture uh, in the debita showing the uh, hemiglossective patient who has been uh, was, uh, done with the revascularized autogenous tissue reconstruction uh, chipa et al uh, studies uh, published in 2004 says that the traditional regional flaps such as pectoralis flap are less commonly used because they are associated with high uh, gastrostomy, gastrostomy tube rates. A clinical swallow examination is used to assess the swallowing function with the focus of oral phase of swallow. The, for oral cavity rehabilitation, the speech pathologist will perform an oral motor assessment. Uh, this includes an evaluation of the oral sphincter competence, where, whether the oral uh, uh, orbicularis oral muscle is how was competent or not. Patient ability to handle the secretion, whether it the whether he can able to hold the secretion into in the mouth or there is any uh, leakage is there from the oral ca cavity on the out exterior or uh, posteriorly in the premature spillage and the tongue to premaxillary or palate contacts these are the tongue it should be contact with the premaxillary alveoli and the uh, palatal, palatal, palatal contact and anterior posterior movement of the tongue retraction and uh, protrusion of the tongue location of the sensitive tissue where the is nothing but where the patient is getting sensed while swallowing and the identification of the area where the food will collect that is the dead space of the oral cavity during the immediate post op period the reconstruction will be uh, frequently bulky and it edematous with radiation the reconstruction will become smaller and the native tissue will become uh, undergo fibrosis the challenge for the speech pathologist is to modify and update the treatment plan for the patient it strategies used to compensate for the change of reconstruction during the first year of rehabilitation and the objective through the first year is to maximize and maintain the mobility of the tongue and focusing on the use of remaining native tissue coming to the dental rehabilitation maintaining the remaining native dentition is for the communication swelling and for the general health therefore including a dentist as a part of treatment is uh, the best approach is prevention in case of, in a dental rehabilitation that is the reduction of the radiation dose to the table whenever it's possible and the removal or restoration of caries teeth prior to the treatment regular regular fluid treatment before and after after the treatment
and treatment of inflamed gingival tissue and rehabilitation with prosthesis maxillofacial prosthesis makes the important contributor to this rehabilitation of the patients with oral cavity and uh, dental rehabilitation with dental prosthesis is uh, important for the function and cosmesis the introducing the dental prosthesis is important important to consider the patient's ability to masticate and prevent the bolus loss the in, uh, introduction of the dental prosthesis can impair the bolus control the patient uh, by covering the sensate tissue where the patient is getting sensation where uh, the there we are, if we are putting the prosthesis the patient sensation will be lost in that pros over the prosthesis area so that the food whatever he is chewing he cannot able to sense it so in the dental prosthesis it can impair the bolus control by covering the sensate tissue preventing glossal labial contact and decreasing the functional oral opening uh, it also uh, also it uh, important it is also important to ensure that the patient can perform a tongue sweep uh, of the labial sulci to clear the food residue especially if it's a lower dental process that is a finger function of the tongue if the patient is unable to perform the finger function of the tongue then use of digit may be required to clear the food particles while eating uh, processes can be use, also useful for the rehabilitation of the soft palate defects the patient with the hard palate uh, soft palate can cancer after the resection the uh, for example uh, it can be a patient can be uh, registered for a soft uh, soft tissue processes uh, defect processes such as for example the patient does not have a good palatal maxillary contact the palatal drop processes can be fashioned facilitating the obliteration of the dead space within the oral cavity which allows the tongue to contact with the processes of the reconstructed palate it may result in the improved clarity of the speech speech sounds and therefore overall speech intelligence in addition the palatal drop process may assist in improving the bolus manipulation control and oral transmission